is Rogers TV. Everybody, this is Out of the Fog. I'm your boy DC, and this is a special episode because tonight we are dedicating our program to all things indigenous culture. We're talking about performance, music, and dance, and film. First, we have Becca and Mike from the Spirit Song Festival. They are going to do an amazing performance or two and talk on the couch about everything they are doing with the Spirit Song Festival out of First Light. You're not going to want to miss it. And then we also have a special presentation, which is all about exploring youth culture by Myra Buckle, who's a filmmaker from Corner Brook, 18 years old. And she made this film about four different indigenous youth. And this is made in hopes that viewers can further be invited to explore and celebrate their own culture. We are so excited. This is Out of the Fog. And first, one of two performances tonight by Becca and Mike and the Drumming Boys. Let's hit it. This is Out of the Fog, and we'll be right back after this break.
Welcome back, everybody. This is Out of the Fog. Thank you so much for joining us. We saw a great performance at the top of the show, and now we are sitting right down with two guests I'm very excited to be hanging out with, Becca and Mike. How are you doing? Pretty good, great. pretty good. Great. Can you work up happy a to be a, here. Well, I'm happy to have you. <laughs> Can you work up a little bit uh, of a heat doing what you do? Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you, what drew you to this beautiful, amazing performance style? That beat of the drum. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, I was 13 when I was first introduced to the beat of the drum, and it was just a natural, it just, I was just like driven towards it, didn't know what it was, didn't know anything about it, and uh, I started to fancy shawl dance, and, and that's when I was 13, and now I've been dancing for 18 years. I didn't stop. All it took was that one drum beat. <laughs> <laughs> And it had me hooked. That's wild. Mm -hmm. Now, forgive me, you know, I feel like growing up between the radio and a million other sources where we hear music in our lives, it, it, it's how it comes to us. But you, when you say the beat of the drum, it feels special. Um, is that sort of a term? Do many people who dance and are called into the profession, is that what it's called? The, I was called to the beat of the drum? Well, the beat of the drum is uh, essentially the heartbeat, mm -hmm. the heartbeat of our nation, the heartbeat of our mm -hmm. Mother Earth, the heartbeat of our culture. Mm -hmm. um, so I just think it's a very natural thing to be drawn to mm -hmm. because when every single one of us yeah. start off in our mom's womb, that heartbeat is the first sound that you ever hear as, as a person. Um, so I think it's just natural in all of us to be driven to that. Even people, like I said, even when you don't know what you're hearing, you're just, it's just like, it just takes over you. It's mesmerizing to hear it. Um, you know, if you're in any vicinity of a drum yeah. and you hear that beat, you're automatically looking, <laughs> where is that coming from? You know what I mean? So. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, what about it's, you? It's, 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 it's wonderful. I mean, once you sit at the drum and you, you kind of look into the drum, it's you get you kind of get lost in it like hearing that beat you're not even really present it's like you go somewhere else completely just like hearing the drum you're 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 not even it's almost like an out of body experience kind of mm -hmm. once you're getting lost in the drum you're just playing and singing and it's a very spiritual kind of experience to be on the drum and, and making that sound and what drew you to it and when um i started on the drum probably in 2018 i would say okay um, relatively new to it, I suppose. Um, it was actually a, a men's group that I joined, you know, just kind of looking for some, some people to hang out with and, and do good. something with my evenings. And <laughs> um, I learned about First Light and mm. showed up and then just kind of stuck around. <laughs> so. I'll tell you what, there's a special festival going on. Why don't you tell me all about it? Yeah, Spirit Song Festival. Uh, we've been on the go with Spirit Song now for 10 years. Wow. And... Uh, it's been a very exciting <laughs> 10 years, I will tell you that much. <laughs> the very first Spirit mm. song, when you look at it in comparison to now, was so small. Mm. You know, it was just a, a few local artists that were kind of grabbed together yeah. and everybody came together to celebrate that culture, celebrate yeah. the artists, yeah. celebrate each other. And then each year it grew and it grew and it grew. And now we're flying in all of these really <sighs> well-known artists yeah. that you know, you think in your life, like, I would never get to meet them. You know what I mean? And yep. now I'm up dancing with them. Unreal. And it's, it's unreal. Yeah. It really, really is. It's I like mean, a dream come true. <laughs> well, it feels that way. And the energy is one thing. And the community is another. And the growth of it and the pride in culture is so fascinating and incredible. And we're also lucky to be able to witness that and to be a part of it. Talk about the details of this in terms of performances and other folks who you're meeting and collaborating with. Tell me all about it. Uh, well, there's a lot. There's a whole I, I lot of that, artists. Yeah. Um, just, just the sheer number of people that are, are coming and, and the performances, the workshops, everything that makes Spirit Song is huge. Um, this year, uh, like Becca said, is the 10th year, tenth year of, of Spirit Song. Oh, yeah. um, and, and to be a part of it and have so many different people around you and it grow to the size that it is, it's just, it's so special. Mm -hmm. And especially to be a part of it as well is just something else. Like, wow. like Becca said, I mean, to be in the same room as these people, not as just a person, but a fellow artist and to be able to like 
collaborate with these people mm -hmm. is is something else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I want to talk about uh, what you're wearing, which is so beautiful and amazing. Yeah. And it's just one of the many aspects of the culture that is so provocative and interesting and captivating for us when it comes to what you do. What are you the most proud of over the years gone by when you look back at all the performances and all the friends you've made? What sticks with you? I think the thing that sticks with me the most is um, how rewarding it is to see how much this means to the community. Mm -hmm. Especially as somebody, like I said, I started off in the youth program. Um, First Light back then was known as the St. John's Native Friendship Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started off as, as 13 years old and it was just such a a life-changing experience wow. to be able to be a part of those things and that feeling that it gave me as a young person and now here I am you know 15 years later and I'm now seeing that same excitement in the communities in the community members that I work with closely now so it just is like full circle yeah and it's like I was that person and now I'm the person sharing that with everyone mm, that's so amazing yeah do you share yeah. that very much so um, one of the first times I've seen, I guess, professional powwow drummers um, in Con River, I remember standing around the arbor and looking at them just in awe of the sound, like just how loud it was. Um, I actually have a memory of uh, standing next to, we were making a circle around the arbor, and the first beat of the drum, I remember it was so loud that the person next to me like jumped. <laughs> um, and just ever since then, I just, I. I you know, the ah you see when you look into the drum, but then to years later be in the arbor myself drumming, it's it's just such a, a crazy feeling. It's mm -hmm. so full circle. Yeah. Mike, in just a moment, would you like just to tell us um, who the members of the uh, group that performed tonight are? Sure. Uh, Wabek Gwen, the drum group, is mm -hmm. uh, myself, Michael Butchell, uh, Robin Purcell, uh, Chris Carisuda Mullet, uh, Jackson Drew, Boyd Kelly, and of course, we have our lovely dancer, Rebecca Scherr. Hello. As we head to go to the break, we have another performance coming up later on. Very much. Thanks. Excited. And so I'll tell you what, where can folks learn more about this and how can they get involved? What advice do you have for the viewers out there? Um, I would say if in regards to going somewhere physically, come to Spirit Song. Go to the workshops. Go to the shows. If it's not Spirit Song Week, come to First Light. Go to the programs. We run programs every single week. Um, and again, it's the same thing. If you're into music, there's a program for you. If you're into dance, there's a program for you. If you're into art, there's a program for you. So, Thank you so just much. get involved. Thank you all for coming on the show. Look forward to the second performance. Will you come back again? Absolutely. Definitely. <laughs> Guys, this is Out of the Fog. It is Spirit Song. And we will be right back after this break. Welcome back, everybody. This is Out of the Fog, and thank you so much to Becca and Mike, who just joined us on the couch after the first of two performances. We'll see another one in just a few minutes. But for now, the special presentation, a short film by Myra Buckle, 18 years old, from Corner Brook, exploring connections amongst Indigenous youth. Check it out. I started gardening when I was three. 
I watched the plants as they grew as I did. This is my first year having my own garden with, I have radishes, I have carrots, I have corn, I have um, peas, I have tomatoes, I have onions, I have cucumber. Sometimes I would give items to friends that I've grown or hunted. For instance, I fish and hunt. Whenever I, whenever uh, we get like a few rabbits that we don't need, we would share it with our aunts and uncles. And gardening takes a big part of me because it honors my big my nation to honor Mother Nature and what she has given us throughout these years. So this book, um, it is about eating. Um, around here, Eastern, Eastern, Eastern Canada, which Newfoundland is. This book also contains memos of fishing, tree fungus, which I do search for. Tree fungus that can be melted down into, I would say, um, I would say like tea is what my mom is looking forward to. There's also chicken in the woods, which is also apparently a mushroom that tastes exactly like chicken. Um, and this book, uh, this book well, is very important to me, to knowing my Mi'kmaq culture and how they survived. This is my drum. It is made out of deer hide, and I made it at a workshop. There was about 10 people there. My sister was the youngest, I was the second youngest, and the workshop was donated by Empowering Indigenous Women. In order to play the drums, we have to bring it to a feasting ceremony, and that's just, it gives us the ability to be able to play it. And we were also given the stuff to make drumsticks. This drum is around around seven years old. So it's around as old as me. I know a few rules with the drum. You do not put it face down like this. You treat the drum like a baby. You cannot break this. The first sunrise ceremony, I was really young. I was probably about six and you all stand in a circle and there are songs played on the drums people do prayers. There were a few songs played at the sunrise ceremony. Uh, one was the humble song, another was the water song, another was the honor song. And um, basically the sunrise ceremony is about gratitude and giving thanks. And it explains that a lot in the songs. I definitely feel more connected to my culture while I'm, when listening to those songs and while people are playing their drums. And I feel like the whole sunrise ceremony just makes me feel very much connected to my culture. I learned the honor song through Mi'kmaq gatherings and I've smudged with this drum before. This is my smudge bundle. Uh, my mom gifted this to me. Uh, this is my seashell. It's like a little bowl. This is my sage, and this is my cedar. This is my brother's feather, and this is sweet grass, as people call it, Mother Nature's hair. So I light it, and my medicines start to burn, and it creates smoke. And that smoke we use to lift our spirits. You do your head, your arms, your legs, then I would ask you to turn around, then I would do your back, and I would say, I'm Saknogama, which means we're related to everything. My name's Wendell Smith. I recently just turned 16 years old in May, and I'm from St. George's, Newfoundland. So sometime in March, um, my mom called me upstairs and asked me if I wanted to go on a trip to Labrador, and she just said that her friend Candace was uh, doing a trip with the native band, and uh, one of the people backed out, and she's friends with her from work, so I got the opportunity to go. And um, 
I think she only had like two hours left until the deadline to let her know if I was gonna go. So I just said, yes, I'll go. I'll take that opportunity. My aunt wanted me to go. My aunt Jenny, she wanted me to go. So she called my mom. She said that there's this trip to Labrador, but like I have to have an answer right now. Like I gotta put her name on it right now if she wants to go. So my mom came to my room. She said, do you want to go to Labrador in four days? We took Skidoo in to get to where we were going uh, on Park Lake. The lodge is like a big, like oak cabin where, where all the kids stay, all of us sleep in, but a couple of nights, uh, like we stayed in for the first night and then we got a Labrador tent set up. So big, so cozy. There's like a little fire in it. So like, it's really cozy. So we stayed in that for the rest of the night. The first night I spent there, I'll tell you, um, it, the lodge was absolutely packed full of people. And uh, so I ended up having to go out into the huge common area where all the Innu people were. And I remember how embarrassed and scared I was to do it at first. And I got a little bit of encouragement from my elders uh, saying no, that they'll take you right in and everything like that. And so the first night I spent uh, on a, on a thin, little, thin little mattress with all the Innu people in, in, uh, all on one great big floor. And uh, it turned out it was, it was crazy. I've never met people in this world that uh, have been so generous and so caring and, uh, and so kind as those Inu people over there. Like, a lot of them don't have very much to give and they'll still give you whatever they got. You know what I mean? And I, uh, the helpfulness that was there and the, the stories and the sense of community and, and belonging and family that was there was, it was really, it was something special that I will take with me now for a long time. That group of people that I met there, they're, we're gonna be friends for life. That's, <laughs> I feel like we're gonna be friends for life. We don't even talk that much. I talk to like one person out of that whole group, but I feel like we're just, if we ever see each other, you know, we're gonna say like, oh my God, the Labrador trip. tons of indigenous paintings. She has one that's pretty famous. It's about the missing and murdered indigenous women. The same painting is carved into the memorial area, that majestic lawn. I think that getting more involved with my culture um, definitely opened me up to more opportunities. Like the Labrador trip, I think that that was, that was very much touching into my culture and I think that more people should get involved with their culture to experience things like that. I want more youth to be involved like me in Mi'kmaq gatherings and other Mi'kmaq relations. Being a part of my culture is really special to me. So it's like good to know that like you're a part of something. People aren't uh, taking in their culture into consideration anymore. I went in with the Inu people and I, I became one of them like a feather on a bird.
Welcome back, everybody. This is Out of the Fog. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in tonight to better explore the beautiful and diverse culture of our indigenous people. There is so much happening to take advantage of with the Spirit Song Festival happening out of First Light. Thank you, Becca and Mike. We're going to throw to them right now one more performance. This was Out of the Fog, and we'll see you next time. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. Yep. Okay, I'll be there.